Hello girls, I guess by now you're bored at home, but anyway you stay safe. To continue with atomic structure and chemical bonding, today we are going to study how protons were discovered and you know in the last upload we talked about how electrons were discovered. So then the chemist they realized that only negative charge is not present in an atom because an atom is electrically neutral. So to balance those negative charge, some positive charge must also be present. So they kept on uh, experimenting. So finally Goldstein, he noticed another set of rays traveling in the direction opposite to that of the cathode rays. Okay, that is that these rays were traveling from anode towards the cathode when a perforated, perforated means where holes were there. Okay, perforated cathode was used in the discharge tube. Now he called these rays as canal rays since these rays pass through holes or canals in the cathode. So these rays were called positive rays or anode rays. Okay, so the properties of the anode rays were they always traveled in a straight line. They consisted or they were made up of minute very tiny material particles and so they produced mechanical effect and they were positively charged particles. Positive rays are deflected by electric and magnetic fields but in a direction opposite to that of the cathode rays. That meant that these rays consist of positively charged particles called protons. And these rays produce fluorescence on a zinc sulfide screen. If a zinc sulfide screen was placed in the path of these positive rays, it formed a fluorescent color, a bright color, okay? So their EM, that is charge to mass ratio, it is different from gas to gas, okay? Your EM, you'll be learning about it in higher classes. And the value was less than that of an electron, and it was maximum when hydrogen was taken in the discharge tube, okay? So, moving on to the properties of protons, a proton, you know, has a unit positive charge, plus one, okay? And the value is 1.602 into 10 to the power of 19 coulombs, okay? The mass is same as that of a hydrogen atom, that is one atomic mass unit that is 183 times the mass of an electron which is 1.672 into 10 to the power of minus 24 grams. Then where do you find the protons? It is in the central part of an atom. The central part of the atom is known as the nucleus. So if you are to define a proton, you will define it as a subatomic particle having mass 1 amu which is equal to the hydrogen atom and it has unit positive charge. Unit means 1 plus 1. Now it is denoted as p 1 and plus 1. The superscript 1 tells us its mass is 1 amu and the subscript plus 1 says that it is 1 positive unit charge. So, uh, how is a proton formed? It is formed by the loss of an electron from a hydrogen atom. Hydrogen has only one electron in its outermost orbit. So, when it loses that electron, it becomes positively charged. That is, it turns into a proton. So, after the discovery of electrons and protons, J.J. Thomson proposed the plum pudding model of the atom okay when we do the periodic table that time you'll understand this better so according to this model what did uh, jj thompson say he said that an atom is considered to be a sphere of uniform positive charge so it is a sphere it is rounded and it has positive charge so here you can see in this diagram okay and electrons are embedded here you can see these are all electrons embedded on it. The total positive charge is equal to the total negative charge. So the atom as a whole is electrically neutral. That means if there are 10 positive charge, then there will be 10 negative charge. So plus 10 minus 10 is equal to 0. So that means the atom is electrically neutral. Okay. 
and the mass of an atom was considered to be uniformly distributed throughout the sphere. Now, then that led to the discovery of nucleus. In 1911, Lord Rutherford, he was a scientist from New Zealand, he directed a stream of alpha particles. Okay, alpha particle here, as you can see, is a doubly charged helium ion, okay, containing two protons and two neutrons. So, he directed this towards a very thin gold foil, okay, one millionth of a centimeter. If you take one centimeter, you divide it into one million parts, you take one part out of that. So, you imagine how thin the gold foil was, okay, and he took a gold foil, why? Because he wanted as thin a layer as possible and gold is the most malleable metal. Malleable metal means you can beat it into sheets, okay. So what did he observe? He observed that most of the alpha particles passed straight through the foil. Some alpha particles were slightly defected from their path, okay? And very few, nearly one in 10,000, that is very, very few alpha particles were either deflected by very large angles or completely bounced back. That is, they came back. So it was like that. So you can see it passed through okay and one bounced back completely or it was deflected there as it went there it was deflected it was going in another direction so later Rutherford he generalized these results of alpha particle scattering experiment so this experiment was known as alpha particles that scattering experiment and then he suggested another model of the atom that is known as Rutherford's atomic model okay so there were certain heavy metals platinum is a heavy metal will show the same observation with the alpha particle the same thing will happen certain things will uh, pass through some will be deflected, some will come right back, okay, as shown by the gold foil. But if light nuclei like lithium is used, then fast moving alpha particles may even push the light nucleus aside and may not be deflected back. So if we use lighter nuclei like lithium. So Rutherford, he proposed an atomic model, that is what an atom looks like that is the structure of an atom so according to Rutherford's atomic model he said that the atom contains a large empty space that is extra nuclear space this is why most of the alpha particles pass through the metal foil without deviating from their path because the space was empty okay and there is a positively charged mass at the center of the atom and he called it the nucleus and it was in this mass that is at the center of the atom that the entire mass of the atom was concentrated. Therefore, the nucleus is the densest part of the atom. He said that the nucleus is the densest part. All the particles were concentrated in the nucleus. The electrically positive nature of the nucleus is supported by the fact that positively charged alpha particles approaching the nucleus gets deflected because opposite attract and similar if it is positive positive they will deflect okay so that is why it was deflecting because when the alpha rays positively charged alpha rays came near the nucleus nucleus also has positive charge so either it deflects back or it changes its path because they will not be attracted so this proved that the nucleus contained protons okay now the size of the nucleus is very small when you compare it to the size of the atom, okay? Why, how was this proved? It was proved by the fact that most of the alpha particles, you know, it passed straight through the gold foil. So there were no, uh, like if the uh, size of the nucleus was big, then all the alpha particles should change their path or return back, okay? And he also said the electrons revolve around the nucleus at large distances from each other and from the nucleus that is in circular orbit just like the solar system okay and an atom as a whole is electrically neutral because the number of positive charge of the nucleus is equal to the number of negative charge of the electrons so like I told you plus 10 minus 10 
is equal to zero so an atom is electrically neutral it does not have charge even though it contains positive charge protons and negative charge electrons so it is a neutral why because the number of protons and the electrons in an atom is equal number of protons is equal to number of electrons and uh, electrons revolve around the nucleus in closed circular paths these paths are known as orbits just like the solar system the sun is in the middle and planets are revolving in the orbit similarly nucleus is there in the middle and electrons are revolving around the nucleus in fixed paths known as orbits okay so the force of attraction between the negatively charged and the positively charged nucleus in the nucleus is counterbalanced by the centrifugal force acquired by the revolving electron so the electrons are revolving around the nucleus so uh, what happens is the positive and the negatively charged will not be attracted towards each other due to the centrifugal force which is um, gained by the electrons which is revolving around the nucleus now rutherford's model of atomic structure is similar to the structure of the solar system just like i told you the sun, sun is in the center having the maximum mass okay and the planets revolve around it similarly an atom in the atom the nucleus is in the center which has the maximum mass and the electrons are revolving around it in orbits or shells but again there were drawbacks of rutherford's at atomic model okay so the comparison of electrons with planets in the solar system is the main drawback of rutherford's atomic model according to the classical laws of mechanics and electrodynamics if an electrically charged particle is moving it is in motion it radiates out or gives out energy so thus an electron when it is moving around the nucleus continually will give out energy that is it is losing energy as a result it should be gradually pulled towards the nucleus and end up colliding with it so this should result in the total collapse of the atom but that is not the case if it was so the atom should be highly unstable and matter would not exist because all the time what would happen the electrons will lose energy as it is going around the nucleus and ultimately it will move more and more slowly and ultimately it will come and fall in the nucleus and the total atom will be destroyed but we know that an atom is structurally stable so that is why rutherford's model failed because it failed to explain the stability of an atom that is how the atom is always stable he could not um, explain that now then came niels bohr's atomic model in 1913 he was a danish physicist he explained the causes of the stability of the atom in a different manner okay so what was the main postulates of bohr's atomic model the electrons revolving around the nucleus are confined in a certain fixed path known as orbits uh, called shells or energy levels okay and each energy level was associated with a fixed amount of energy each orbit had a fixed amount of energy so when it was revolving around the nucleus in an orbit an electron neither loses energy nor does it gain energy so an electron when it is revolving in a particular orbit maybe the first orbit or the second orbit when it gains a certain amount of energy it jumps to the next orbit and if it loses energy it will jump to the lower orbit okay so since each orbit is associated with a fixed amount of energy bohr called it an energy level so for convenience these energy levels are labeled as k l m n or the first second third fourth energy label um, levels the orbit which is closest to the nucleus is the k shell or the first shell it has the least amount of energy and the electrons present in it are called k electrons and so on so we have l um, orbit m orbit n orbit so as you go from one orbit to another orbit the energy increases okay so 
Then came the discovery of neutrons. Okay, by now we know that an atom contains electrons, protons, electrons are negatively charged and protons are positively charged particles. Okay, and the atomic mass of the electron is negligible. Negligible means it is so small you can ignore it. Therefore, an atom of helium which has two protons should have mass 2 into 1 amu that is 2 amu. But the atomic mass of helium atom was found to be 4 amu. Now, how was that possible? Until and unless there were some other particles together with it. So, it was therefore proposed that in the nucleus of an atom, there must be another particle. Okay. So, this particle does not have any electrical charge and it must be equal to the mass of the proton. So, it was in 1932 when Chadwick discovered these particles by bombarding light nuclei like beryllium with again alpha particles that is the helium nuclei. Okay, So, he found out that when it was bombarded with the alpha particles, he found out that another particle was present there which were known as neutrons. Okay, So, these particles were neutral. Neutral means it does, did not have any positive charge, neither did it have any negative charge. So, it was neutral. So, he called them neutrons. So, to define a neutron, it is a subatomic particle or fundamental particle of an atom with no charge and mass almost equal to the mass of the proton that is of hydrogen atom. Remember that the proton is always compared to the hydrogen atom. Okay, So, here you can see how the neutron atom is denoted. The superscript 1 represents the mass and subscript 0 represents its electrical charge. That means it does not have any electrical charge. So, what were the properties of neutrons? This particle was not found to be deflected by any magnetic or electric field because it does not have any charge, no positive charge, no negative charge. That is why it is not deflected and its um, mass was equal to 1.676 into 10 to the power of minus 24 grams that is 1 amu. And after the discovery of electrons, protons and neutrons, that is the subatomic particles, it was found that all atoms have the same basic structure. So, electrons are negatively charged and they are found outside the nucleus. Protons are positively charged and they are found in the nucleus of an atom. Neutrons are electrically neutral particles did not have any charge and they were found in the nucleus. Okay, And uh, please remember children, neutrons are slightly heavier than protons. Okay, um, Now there is this table which compares the Dalton's atomic theory with the modern atomic theory. Okay, This is your assignment for, the, for this week together with the Plum pudding model theory, please draw the diagram as well. So, this is all for today children. Till then children, stay safe. God bless you.